G'day folks, it's Rob here and welcome to the aquaponic area of our small little backyard farm. Just excuse a butterfly flying around. Uh, today's uh, clip is going to be a bit of an update on some plans I've got on the go for the system, cleaning out a few beds and whatnot, and also just showing you how I'm getting it ready for the summer heat. Uh, yesterday we had a 38 degree day and we've got another one, I think it's a 40 degree day in a couple of days time. So I'll just show you what are the steps I've taken to try and keep things a little bit cool for the fish and the plant. So I'll grab the camera and we'll start up near the fish. I threw the fish food in just before I started to film. I should, probably should have waited. They've almost polished it all off by the look of it. There's not a lot left. So anyway, the silver perch are doing pretty well. Um, I'm considering splitting them between the two tanks. We've got the other tank over there still. Uh, that one there, I do need to clean out a bit. It's got a bit of greenery on the side still. Uh, we decommissioned that one a little while ago. So what I'll do is run the little bit of water that's down the base, just out of the valve over the end there, down onto the lime tree area. Fill this one up with some new water um, and condition it for the fish, bring the pH down, because the water comes out of our tap um, above eight here on the pH scale. And I'll move some of the fish from that tank into there. We'll try and get the large ones away from the smaller ones. There's not an issue with the large ones picking on the small ones. I just thought I'd have a, a shot at trying to keep the larger ones um, separated from the smaller ones. We'll probably eat the larger ones first and just keep the smaller ones in there just to tick over uh, the nutrients in the system. Someone just had a big splash over the back there. But yeah, um, I don't think they're going to be too camera friendly. They're probably hiding down the bottom. Um, just quickly, um, yeah, the, the little bit of green you see on the pipe there, I get asked about that a lot, uh, the algae in the system. Um, I'm actually working on a frequently asked question clip. So I'll bring that to you folks soon. Uh, just questions I get about the system in general and also other questions about how people can go about making their systems. I've got a couple of answers for you. Um, they'll be polite, I promise. Uh, over here, the pH in the system, we're still traveling fairly high. We're still sitting at um, around about 7.3 and temperature wise, we we're up around about 26 degrees in the water and atmospherically today we're sitting at about 31. Uh, yesterday we went up to 38 as I said and the water in the system was uh, roughly around about 28 degrees Celsius. So what I did, knowing that we've got a couple of hot days coming, I popped some 90% shade cloth just over the fish tank side of things. Also too, that'll help cut down on the algae buildup that we do get in there. And I ran a section of 30% just over the center of the grow beds. Uh, the, they'll get a little bit of sunlight in the morning um, that may wilt some of the plants on the 40 degree day, but you know, nothing too drastic. Uh, just a quick look at this bed just to show you to begin with. We've got a nice hedge full of um, lettuce. I did mention in a backyard roundup clip uh, a week or so ago um, that these are an heirloom variety. I'll mention it for you aquaponic folks who only tune in for these clips. These are a variety of lettuce mum and dad have been saving for around about eight to 10 years now, um, just over and over, generation after generation. They live about 10 meter, uh, 10 meters, 10 kilometers um, northeast from here. So they have fairly much well the same conditions climatically. And every year what we do is we save the last lettuce that goes to seed. We save the seeds from that plant. And over the generations, we've ended up with a, um, a plant or a lettuce plant that doesn't go to seed very quickly. Sorry for that long explanation, but I thought I'd just um, spell it all out. We've got one here that has gone to seed already. So what we'll do now is we'll just um, snip that flower head out and that'll prevent it from going to seed and the leaves going bitter. And what I'll do is I'll come down and harvest all these greens around here for tonight. I'll probably pull the whole plant out. Uh, down here, we've got a zucchini. Uh, this poor little zucchini, I almost killed it the other day. I had issues with um, the bell siphon not initiating in this bed, but that's since been rectified. But today, yeah, they're looking great. Uh, over here, we've just got some plants that Bianca's trying to strike. They're from a plant from one of the, her workmates. And unfortunately, they got a little bit scorched by the sun yesterday and the day before as well. But hopefully they'll set a few roots down. Uh, the Brazilian spinach loves the heat. It's just doing phenomenally well. 
I'll be taking a nice harvest out off of this very soon and popping it in the freezer with some Warrigal Greens. Just to show you down here, I didn't kill that lettuce from the last clip, if you remember seeing that. Um, yeah, but they've gone to seed, so these are a couple of rabbit ear lettuce. I did show in the other update uh, clip from last week how I harvested the seed from these rabbit ear lettuce, so uh, you can click back on that if you're interested in seeing how we save the seeds. While you're there, you might as well subscribe as well, if you haven't done so already. Um, down in this bed we have some thyme, I still haven't planted out and there's a reason for that that I'll get to in a minute and same with this basil here, I almost killed this basil as well but it's bounced back nicely, I just forgot to come out and water the seedlings after I bought it just some leftover zip ties from doing the shake off yesterday the beetroot in here is doing very well and thank you very much Mr David for dropping them off for me we've got some more over in the barrel that I'll show you in a tick this Celtus or Chinese lettuce um, is going really well. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, we're not really eating that much of it, to tell you the truth, because we were hoping to get a nice big fat stem from this one. It looks like the healthiest one that was growing in the aquaponics, so you can actually eat the stem of this, which is pretty much well what we'll be doing. Over the back there, some more Malabar spinach. Oh, sorry, Malabar. Um, Brazilian spinach. And we have a couple of lettuces that mum gave me the same time as these corals. If I can get the tripod out of the um, brahmi there. They came in the same time as these coral lettuce as seedlings. But these guys obviously are not very acclimatised to our heat and went straight to seed. Just quickly before we go over further. This brahmi absolutely loves the aquaponics. It's um, reputedly very good for um, um, conditions to do with uh, brain damage. Um, I've been told that people who suffer severe concussions and things like that, I'm not a doctor, look it up for yourself, but yeah, this is a little herb that we grow. It's very bitter, uh, so it's not something we add into a lot of meals, but we do snip off the odd um, stem like that and throw it in salads. It does have very pretty white flowers though. And up here, the sage, sage is flowering, and we're getting some new growth coming through. Um, what else? Oh, we'll go around the other side, hey? So this bed here is the one that I think could be causing me problems with the pH staying up, um, just creating a little bit of an anaerobic zone. Basically what happens, the nitrogen cycle gets reversed. If there's not a lot of oxygen in there, the, um, the bacteria will strip oxygen from the nitrate and turn it to nitrite and all sorts of issues there. Uh, and in the process, you actually raise the pH. So there's no other elements in the system that could be raising the pH. So that's all I can put it down to. But anyway, uh, that's for another clip. Uh, this celery is surrounding the bell siphon. So what I think is happening is these roots are contain, uh, filtering out a lot of solids and they're causing a bit of an anoxic zone. So as a result, I'm pulling this, all this clay out of this bed and I'm going to turn them into a deep water culture bed because I had, there goes that butterfly again, it's hounding me. Where is it? Went next door. Um, <laughs> This um, raft material came from uh, Dave from Bluestone Aquaponics. He had it imported into Australia. It's uh, the Beaverboard brand. So we've got a 72 hole. Uh, these are the small hole. And we have a um, 36 hole one as well. This one here, I think I left my props up in the house. Just excuse me, folks. So what we've got is the 72 hole. And the holes here are just the right size just to put in the little grow grips. So I can pop them straight in here. This is actually a um, seedling board. But what I'm planning on doing is drilling every second one out to a two inch. And I'm going to use these grow grips in there. These are the two inch grow grips uh, put out by Bigelow Brook Farm. Uh, so every second hole in two of these boards are going to be drilled out. We also have two boards of the square ones. Um, so yeah, I'm not too sure about these guys. Put it around the right way. I'm not too sure, they'll take the same little seedling plugs. So I might leave these um, as a seedling board yet. We'll just wait and see. Um, but yeah, I've got enough boards to do up four beds. So two of these and six of these ones here, which means technically all my um, grow beds could be turned into deep water culture if I wanted, as long as I have a large enough biofilter uh, to look after the ammonia and nitrite as it comes out of the fish. So. Yeah, this bed here, if I can just pan this smoothly enough to show you. Now I've got the kookaburras laughing at me. Um, this bed here will be emptied out. A few other plants in here do need to be transplanted out. We've got our perennial leeks. 
what I'll do is probably eat this large one, but all these small leeks that are coming up from the base, I'll break them off and transplant them out. A couple of them might even make it back in here in these um, grow grips, we'll wait and see. And we have this lemongrass down here. Um, this was a little bit that I didn't need when I harvested some for cooking from our other barrel and I just popped it in here. It's got a load of little pups on down the base there as well. So um, what I might do is I might break them off and start them off either in the aquaponics separately or in um, other uh, wicking barrels around the yard. These guys can actually get rather huge root mass wise so I don't want too many in the media beds. There might be another one to try out in the grow grips. Uh, the red celery, I'm sorry Chris, but it will be going. I'll be pulling it out. Uh, we will be making celery salt from a lot of it, but um, unfortunately it's just too big a root mass to leave in there as a continual picker. Next time what I'll do is I'll grow them from seed, um, maybe in the deep water, we don't know yet, but I'll grow them from seed and see how they go. Now one other little plant I have over in the corner, that little warrigal green over there, I'm actually really interested to see how that will go in the deep water culture. So I'm going to try and rescue that one when I empty the bed out and just see how it goes. As for the other plants in here, we do have some lavender that I just started off from a cutting. And that woody material there is a little bit of um, the base of the thyme plant. There is a little bit of greenery hanging over the edge there, but I'm pretty sure that, um, yeah, that plant's not gonna bounce back too well. So I'll um, plant out the variegated thyme you saw in the other bed to replace it. Yeah, so um, popping these rafts in has been a long time coming. I know some people are going to ask the question, why have I gone with a commercial one? Why haven't I used just the insulation foam that you can get? Unfortunately, here in Australia, the insulation foam has a fire retardant in it as a standard. It's just a government standard. I'm not happy growing food in that personally. Um, if other people want to do it, go for it. I know a few people who paint the boards where there's any exposed surfaces. I do know a few people recommend using the insulation board within the aquaponic community. Um, I rang up the foam people themselves and I spoke to them and they couldn't guarantee me that it would be food safe, tripping over my own words. So that's why I've held out um, until I've got a decent product that I know is going to be safe. So. Uh, just to let you know, you know, because I know the question's going to be asked. Just noticed I've got a few more rabbit ear lettuce coming up here. And I know there's a couple around here as well. So they're just all volunteers that have come from that plant I harvested seed from in the last clip. Uh, just quickly, I do have a, a large trough here, getting back to the deep water culture. I do have a large green trough I could set up here. But um, what I want to do is finish that section in Ryan Chatterson's College of Aquaponics and Engineer, Engineering and Aquaponics before I um, hook up the big deep water culture bed. So that's why I'm just sticking with this small little one. Uh, I also want to rework filters and piping and plumbing over there. So I figure I'll finish the course, then I'll bring out the big trough and we'll plumb that up. The course, by the way, thank you very much, Ryan, for putting up with me and taking so long to do it. Um, the course is fantastic. Definitely recommend it to anyone who's thinking about going small time commercial or just wants to emulate the big boys in their own backyard um, with some really good um, aquaponics filtration. And Ryan just goes all the way through the flow rates and all that sort of thing. Definitely does pay to learn from someone who is in the game, runs a farm, has a profitable farm and does this on the side. Just quickly, I have had to wind back um, answering questions through emails, Facebook and YouTube on the direct message systems there. Um, just basically being inundated. I'm trying to build my uh, website that will host a lot of the um, content that will answer your questions. So um, yeah, I'm also working on clips as I may have mentioned before. If you have any questions about aquaponics, pop them in the comments section below. And if there's something I haven't been asked before, I'll try and include them in the clips if I think they're worthwhile. I won't answer them below the clip, sorry. I'll just say a thanks, just so you know that I've seen it. Thank you again to Dave from Bluestone Aquaponics and to all our other Patreons who are supporting us. There's a list of our super contributors down below, including a link to Dave's Facebook page, um, Aqua Gardening here in Brisbane, a guitar maker, and other backyard farmers and homesteaders. So check them out in the description below. So I do hope you've enjoyed this little bit of an update, folks, and also that your own gardens and aquaponics are booming, and I will catch you next clip. Cheers, all. Have a top one.